Hello, welcome uh, to the course on other signal processing for music applications. We are in the last week of the course and in this week we are uh, touching uh, different small topics with the idea of uh, wrapping up the course and uh, giving you uh, some views that uh, we haven't uh, been able to uh, cover in the course like highlighting uh, some specific topics like identifying uh, future directions of the kinds of things we're doing or uh, topics that you might in be interested in exploring uh, after taking this course and in this particular lecture uh, I want to introduce you uh, my research group uh, the music technology group at the Universidad Pompeu Fabra so that uh, you know us better uh, and especially you know the type of research that we do uh, and the, mainly the research that relates uh, to what we have been talking uh, about uh, these, uh, these last few weeks. Um, so the Universidad Pompeu Fabra is in Barcelona in the northeast part of Spain and in the city uh, the university has uh, three campuses. We are in the communication campus as part of the engineering department but together with uh, the department of journalism and audiovisual communication and uh, the department of, uh, of linguistics uh, and uh, departments that relate uh, to the topic of uh, communication in an interdisciplinary type of manner. Uh, but our uh, group is very much within the engineering department, what we call the Department of Information and Communication Technologies. And uh, therefore our uh, teaching responsibilities uh, relate to uh, computer science, electrical engineering, and even biomedical engineering. And we teach uh, courses uh, that relate with music, audio, um, and some general topics uh, like programming or uh, machine learning or uh, some other uh, generic uh, topics uh, that are offered in these uh, undergraduate programs. At the graduate level, um, we have uh, more specific programs. Uh, we have this uh, Master in Sound and Music Computing. Uh, that is very much uh, within the scope of our research group. This is a program that has been going on uh, for a few years now. And our course, in fact, uh, the, the, course, uh, the Coursera course is, uh, in fact, one of the courses of the master, even though in the master we can complement uh, this online uh, teaching with uh, some other types of activities that I believe complement and can help uh, understand better some of the things we have been talking uh, as I guess you have uh, figured out online teaching is amazing is wonderful but uh, also it's good to have some uh, human contact from time to time in the in the in a classroom or in a personal situation um, so anyway so you of course uh, you are most welcome to apply to this master which apart from the other signal processing type of uh, course we also offer other uh, courses and activities related with other areas of music technology like related with uh, the kinds of things we do in the, in the music technology group that I will mention you and then uh, the PhD program is um, a PhD program of the department and like uh, all PhD programs is uh, focused on a, on a thesis and therefore it's a thesis under the supervision of a faculty member and uh, so at the MTG we have uh, many PhD students uh, working with uh, our faculty and uh, focusing on a variety of topics uh, of, of the things we do and again that's uh, what I will uh, mention uh, next. So let me tell you a little bit about uh, the research which is the core of what we do. Uh, we can classify the research into four areas one is audio signal processing and you should know about that by now another we call it sound and music description and we also hinted uh, to that in the last week and we will uh, now uh, talk a little bit more about that and then we have another area which uh, we call musical and advanced interaction which relates with uh, developing interfaces for music applications and finally, uh, another one that we kind of mentioned also uh, to this week, which relates with semantic technology, with, with semantic web. So all the technologies that 
are at a higher level than this audio processing that uh, a lot deal with text related issues and that allow to make sense of sound and music related information and uh, that can complement quite well this audio uh, processing type of approach. Um, so let me just go through each of these uh, topics and uh, give you some examples of some things that we do. So let's start with audio signal processing. One of uh, the first research lines that we started uh, was uh, related to singing voice synthesis and still is a very active uh, uh, line of research. Uh, in fact, we started uh, a collaboration with Yamaha uh, quite a long time ago and uh, one of the projects that uh, we have been uh, developing uh, has been uh, Vocaloid, what is now known as Vocaloid, a singing voice synthesizer. Uh, and maybe uh, the people in Japan know very well the, the Hatsune Miku character. Hatsune Miku is one of the virtual singers that uh, Vocaloid has. And uh, maybe for the people that don't know about that, you might be uh, interested in uh, learning about it and just type uh, Vocaloid or Hatsune Miku in uh, YouTube or uh, on internet and uh, you will see uh, the kinds of things that uh, Hatsune Miku has been uh, doing. So anyway, so the technology behind this uh, singing voice synthesizer is very much related to what we have been doing in class. It's a spectral based model of the voice in which we uh, analyze uh, the harmonics and we subtract the harmonics and we obtain uh, a model similar to this idea of harmonic plus stochastic decomposition. In the area of audio uh, signal processing, uh, another a topic related with that one is transforming uh, the voice, and mainly uh, again the singing voice. So developing real-time systems that uh, allow um, to change the voice in real time from your own voice and change the character. And we have been doing several installations like in museums or uh, plugins that allow to uh, do this type of uh, transformations. Again, with uh, very similar techniques uh, like the ones we have been doing in class. Another um, uh, more recent activity that we started working on is uh, sound source separation. And again, uh, we have uh, hinted at some of these issues in the course, but uh, sound source separation is uh, a quite well-defined problem by itself that uh, has developed into uh, uh, sort of a set of methodologies that are used for uh, this particular problem that deviate a little bit from uh, what uh, we have been doing, but it's a clear continuation of uh, this course. And uh, as uh, the word says, the idea is to separate sources within a polyphonic uh, signal and try to get uh, the individual sources to sound as good as possible. Okay, um, now let's go to the other uh, topic that we classify our research into and is the idea of sound and music description. And uh, this is uh, something that uh, we talked about last week and is the idea of how to extract features from a sound that can be used to describe uh, a sound or a piece of music. Um, so Essentia is a library that uh, we have been developing and maintaining and we are extending constantly uh, to which we are basically uh, incorporating new research results that we obtain at this level, at the level of obtaining features that might be of use to describe and in this case for example this is a visualization of uh, some of these uh, low-level features in a sonic visualizer uh, and that uh, can be uh, quite useful for a number of tasks. Um, in the same area of sound and music description uh, and related with the kinds of things we mentioned about the different levels of abstraction, the, the level of abstraction that uh, musically starts to be interesting is when we can extract features that have some musical significance. So things like the harmony or the chords of a piece of music, uh, features that can allow us to segment uh, our recording so that we can uh, define the structure of a piece of music, or features that allow us to characterize the melody so that we can extract the, the pitch 
or the prominent pitch of a song and then identify certain notes or certain uh, melodic uh, um, landmarks that can be of, uh, of use. And then uh, another example is uh, rhythm related features. Um, so we are interested in uh, trying to find ways to, to find the different levels of a rhythmic uh, kind of a structure. And you can start from the onset, but you can go higher up, so it's a multi-layer kind of concept rhythm, and uh, we can define different uh, patterns or structuring units uh, that relate with rhythm. And these are things that are uh, very active, and uh, we are working on, on them. Um, and then um, another uh, uh, topic related with these uh, is uh, going towards music collections, not just describing sounds, but describing collections of sounds or collections of music recordings. And uh, this is an example of a project uh, that uh, I am leading, which is called Comp Music, in which we are studying uh, several music collections uh, from different music traditions around the world. Uh, in fact, we are studying five music traditions, the two Indian traditions, Carnatic and Hindustani, uh, one uh, tradition from uh, China, the Beijing Opera, another from, uh, from Turkey, uh, what uh, can be called the Turkish Makam tradition, and finally another from the north part of Africa, the Maghreb, which is the Arab Andalusian music. These are traditions, uh, classical traditions, that uh, are very interesting. Uh, they have some specific peculiarities that require some particular analysis, and that's what we are interested in, finding um, ways for describing the melodic, the rhythmic, or the semantic issues of a particular music repertoire of a music tradition in a way that makes sense for that particular music tradition. And then out of that, we uh, put that together into uh, like a discovery type of uh, front end, which uh, we call Dunia, and that they, I will talk about in a demonstration class that uh, uh, can be used to navigate through these uh, different music collections. And in this case, we start both from audio signals and we also need information related to audio, all these uh, metadata, all these editorial metadata, and information about the music that we can extract, for example, from places like Wikipedia. So anyway, so that's a quite complex uh, project in which we do uh, different types of analysis. It uses some uh, some uh, signal processing uh, work, uh, it uses some machine learning, and then finally it uses some semantic analysis to make sense of uh, these other types of data that we also uh, use. Okay, and then uh, let's go to the next um, area that we uh, mentioned, and this does not relate much with uh, the, the course, uh, is uh, the idea of musical and advanced interfaces. So we have a team within the MTG that specializes in developing uh, interfaces and developing new ways of interacting with music. And the React table, which is a quite well-known outcome of that group, has been quite popular. And so this is a, a table uh, with which uh, a musician uh, can interact with different objects and through that uh, make uh, music. So it's basically it's a synthesizer uh, and is an uh, is, uh, interactive uh, synthesizer that has this uh, feedback, this visual feedback that is quite interesting and that uh, offers quite a lot of uh, new possibilities for uh, making music. And then uh, the last group of topics that uh, I mentioned uh, was the one called Semantic Technologies for Sound and Music. And this is this area in which, uh, apart from the audio uh, content, we are interested in this uh, text-based information, this uh, metadata that uh, is associated with the audio, and that can be treated by itself and can be processed in different ways. For example, Freesound, which is uh, uh, this uh, website that uh, you all know, it's a great platform to do some of this semantic uh, type of work. So for example, all the work that we need to do to um, organize the tags and to recommend tags when you upload a sound uh, and all the issues of uh, searching and recommending things 
this can be done from the audio and we do it from the audio and it can be done from this text and this requires some semantic type of technology so freesound is a great platform to do uh, some of these uh, semantic analysis uh, research and finally the last uh, project i want to mention is uh, acoustic brains uh, acoustic brains uh, is a very new initiative uh, that uh, we started uh, with Music Brains um, that again uh, even though it has this audio related work it allows us uh, to explore uh, semantic analysis, semantic technologies and develop very interesting research on these uh, new areas. Um, so Music Brains is a great environment uh, that has structured information about music and we will talk about that in a demonstration class uh, this week. So we start from that and uh, in Music Brains every single song, every single artist has an identifier and then we, we assign that to a particular audio recordings that people in Acoustic Brains analyze and upload to our server. And uh, so we have a huge collection of analyzed sounds, analyzed uh, uh, music so we don't have the music and uh, here is because of the copyright issue so we just the the people just uh, upload the analysis of those recordings using uh, an Essentia extractor uh, we'll talk that we'll talk about that in the demonstration class so you learn uh, more about that uh, also in the in this class so anyway so this is a, a very new and interesting project that I believe has a lot of future for exploring this combination of music description with audio content and semantic analysis and develop a lot of uh, very interesting uh, new ideas and, uh, and even uh, possibilities for uh, developing uh, 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 very interesting tools for music. Here are some uh, references uh, to the things I have mentioned. Uh, so you can uh, go to the website of the university, of the department, or of the MTG, where you will find uh, much more information about what I have been talking about. And I, here I just added some links uh, that you might be interested in uh, looking at. So for example, the Wikipedia entry for Vocaloid, or also the website of the project Com Music, uh, in which we are studying all these uh, world of music traditions or the entry uh, in Wikipedia for the reactable instrument or um, the, the website of this uh, new project uh, Acoustic Brains and uh, I guess uh, well you can find these uh, slides in the SMS tools too. Okay so uh, I gave you a very brief overview of uh, the kind of research we do at the MTG. We're doing more uh, so if you want to learn more you can look at, uh, at our website and uh, you can learn uh, all the kinds of things we do. We, we try to be uh, very active at uh, explaining uh, what we do, uh, so you will find uh, quite a lot of links and videos uh, about all our work. So I hope uh, you enjoy it. Thank you very much. See you next uh, lecture. Bye-bye.